All right, so here we have a question about uh, this question that is in the sample questions that we give out. A SQL injection vulnerability can be caused by which of the following? Password complexity, improper input validation, say that three times in a row, discretionary access control, or cross-site request forgery. Wow, that just sounds like a mouthful there on D. Well, if you recall our technique, first you should do a 50-50. Okay, so 50-50 puts us in a position where, hey, we want to eliminate two, right? And if you didn't join us the other sessions, we were saying that you might want to consider reading from the bottom up. Because human nature, it's intuitive to try to pick the first answer and don't even read the other ones. So if you give yourself a fighting chance with the 50-50 and you read from the bottom up, there's a good chance you're going to get this right here. So first off, you need to know what SQL injection is. So st SQL, or SQL, stands for Structured Query Language. And what that is, is a way to retrieve data from a database. And it's very caveman-like in syntax. Simple statement would be select all. And in this particular case, the all would be something that we would indicate by an asterisk something like that, select all, and then from, table. Okay, so I'll just write TBL. All right, so this is what a SQL statement is. You can have select, you can have um, insert, you can have update, you can have delete. Um, you know, all sorts of cool commands that you can use within structured query language um, if you're a programmer. And the way that it works is, is that uh, on a web form here, let's say that this is a login form. Stand by. Login. Okay. So on the login form here, we're going to put in probably our username and password, right? So with our username and password here, we can actually do some pretty cool stuff behind the scenes. Well, if you have down here at the bottom, this button. This button has this thing right here on the login screen that is called a click event. And the neat thing about this is, is that with the click event, basically you say, hey, web page, when somebody clicks on this button, do something. So behind the scenes, you know, you write the code, you, you make the magic happen. And the click event is glorious, and um, you know it's it's wonderful. So uh, bear with me here for a second. So the click event then happens, and uh, behind the scenes it says, "Hey, go out and make a ODBC or maybe a Java." connection so JDBC but either way you're going to make a open database connection to a database of some sort and usually in like Visio or you know something that we're looking at online you'll see the database um, drawn as a cylinder that's my naive approach to try, try to draw a cylinder so click event connects out to the database wherever that data store is and then inside of the click event here, there's some code, and it says, hey, select all from database table, 
And then underneath that, you throw in a where clause where UID equals, let's just say B McGee. Right? So UID equals B McGee. And then you throw in an AND statement. And I'm, I know that this is taking longer than you were hope, hoping for, but we're going to go ahead and do it anyways. We're, UID equals quote B McGee. And Password equals Tick, and then txt, I'm just going to write this in here, txt pwd dot value. Okay, so check it out. Now why is that important? Well, it may not be important to you, but to any of these web clients that are out there, this is super important. Because remember, here is the UID. Here is the password right here. So the text box here, it's filled in with B McGee. Well, the text box here for UID is probably called txt and you could actually go into debug mode in a lot of the browsers and look at it but it's it's probably called txt user id or something like that okay and the dot value would be whatever is put into that text box here okay and over here with this one the txt password is this box and whatever's put into that txt password dot value is what is passed dynamically when the click event executes it goes through the odbc and executes the command and then whatever you put into here thus we call it an input whatever you input into here actually gets passed back here to a dynamic SQL statement. And so what we can do with SQL injection inside the password field here, a comment in SQL is a tick or an apostrophe. So we can actually go tick and semicolon. And again, this is in the, the, the password text box here. So tick semicolon that's supposed to be a tick right here and then you can say or one equals one and if you put that into the password here this input now gets put into here and how often does one equal one well, let me just show you here what happens here. This tick, and yes, this is not a one, so I apologize for that. I, I, I think if I erase it, it will erase it all. But um, this is a tick mark, so an apostrophe. So if I was to actually input this in here, the SQL statement would not show this text password anymore right here. right? It would actually just show a 
tick, tick. This is the second tick. And then it would actually show a, a semicolon, and then it would be or one equals one tick. Like that. And so it would close out the SQL statement, the structured query language statement, by giving us a um, an absolute value and says or one equals one. Well, what happens is select all from table where user ID equals Ben McGee and password equals tick tick. And then that statement is complete. So UID is this, and then you say, or show me in the database anything where one equals one. And then the database says, uh, one always equals one, you idiot. And then what it'll do is it'll just return all the records in the database to you because the input that it was given is an absolute. So now that we've said that, I think that we can go through and answer this question. Let's do that. So let's do the 50-50 rule. Remember, 50-50. And then we'll go from the bottom up. All right, so SQL injection vulnerability can be caused by which of the following? Um, Cross-site request forgery? No, it just doesn't sound right. Discretionary access controls? No. Uh, improper input validation? Yeah. Uh, password complexity? No. So we got it down to the 50-50 right here, and I'm going with B. So let's just go and confirm the answer. Excuse me. I don't even remember which one is that. That is. That's this one right here. 